so like everyone else in this room, we work to change people's lives for good. Thank you. I'll say more about the first two points on this slide uh, later, the how we bring about change, how we change lives for good. Um, just wanted to start by thinking about what makes the advocacy project so particular. And I think it builds on some of the earlier comments that Kate was making. Personal experience of the challenges faced by those we work with, whether mental health, learning disabilities, dementia, uh, it's baked into the organisation, baked in at every level of the organisation. 40% of our staff and 50% of our trustees have lived experience. So it's really factored into decision making as well as being built into our processes such as staff recruitment. It's absolutely not an optional extra. And this gives us an authenticity and helps us build trust with clients, which means that they get better outcomes. And it's also a key differentiator, a means that we can create products and services that hit the spot and also help us innovate. And again, this picks up some themes that Kate was uh, sharing earlier. And an example of how it being baked in helps us innovate is a fast track COVID-19 product that we launched so that people who were digitally excluded, the relatively new phenomenon of digital poverty, could access the internet, keep themselves safe and well during the pandemic. And we all know that social isolation and loneliness can contribute to mental health problems. So advocacy. Advocacy is about helping people and communities speak truth to power in order to bring about positive change, whether for an individual or a community or changing the system. Speaking truth to power. We try really hard not to do things to people or do things for people. We help people find their own voice and develop their capacity to do things for themselves, to increase their own agency. We don't just assume they know best. So, Given our issues, um, the, the issues that Kate described earlier, given our mission, and given the increasing inequality that we're finding at the moment with more and more people falling into poverty, we're finding that we really need to prioritize those in greatest need. And we, we really focus on those who struggle to get their voices heard and acted upon. And we build a compelling picture, stories and testimonies, as well as facts and figures, because sound research is really the foundation for effective advocacy. If you haven't got those stories, if you haven't got those facts, however right you might be about the issue, it's unlikely you're going to find a way to progress it, to, to get it changed. Um, in a way that puts people that we work with front and center, we support people and communities to advocate themselves, amplify their voices and help create an environment in which change can happen. And that's how we can address the root causes of injustice. Uh, advocacy will come to life better with some examples. So here's Michael. He has learning disabilities, physical disabilities, and difficulties with speech. And here he is speaking to politicians and policymakers in Parliament. We collaborated with MenCap 
and NCVO on issues about um, blocks and barriers for people with learning disabilities to get work and keep work due to inequalities in the benefit system and dis and disincentives in the benefit system. And Michael telling his own story, um, you could see the shock on people's faces. You could absolutely see the shock on people's faces, you know, policymakers, politicians, when they realized the impact that the benefit was system was having on people's lives. Telling his own story was so powerful. And as a result of this, we got some small changes to the local council's approach to supporting employment. And we got the promise of the issue being reviewed by a select committee. But there was a general election and the, which meant that the issue never did reach the select committee because of PERDA. However, we didn't give up. We kept advocating on the issue, as did other partners in the voluntary and community sector. And over time, the issue became much more openly discussed by policymakers and politicians. And eventually, over probably two, three years, the benefit system was tweaked to remove this specific problem. Now, there's still uh, lots of problems with the benefit system, not pretending it was all fixed, but this one issue that was having a massive impact on people's lives was, was removed. And I think that lots of small actions, lots of small changes, can really make a difference and can really help um, create change. You know, lots of small acts. And I, the image, the metaphor that I, I kind of have in my mind for this is, is Dunkirk. You know, <laughs> Dunkirk, there were lots of small acts of courage, lots of individual acts really added up and turn the tide. So sometimes I think we've got to keep that in mind when we're advocating and, and lobbying. It's, um, you know, sometimes it's a long game, but lots of small acts and working together can really make a difference. So this is a different example. The work we did on addressing homophobic abuse in a hospital setting, so institutional abuse, was another really interesting example. Through advocacy that we do under the Mental Health Act, we came across several people identifying as LGBTQ that were that shared with us that they were frightened, and I think that is the right word, they were frightened to disclose important information about their life and their health to the hospital because they were scared of the consequences. So we listened deeply to their concerns and a picture of abuse and neglect came to light. Naturally, re resolved the individual issues and supported those people to go through safeguarding processes. But we also undertook an equality and diversity survey with patients, not just in this one hospital, but across the whole foundation trust. And the evidence was, was compelling, personal testimonies and stories, as well as quantitative data. And we shared the evidence with the trust concerned who agreed that we could convene patient groups to explore what the solutions might be. So listening deeply to the voices of the people that were subject to this abuse, together we came up with the idea of rainbow lanyards. You can see it in this slide, a visible sign that it's safe to talk to health and social care professionals wearing that lanyard. And they also recommended a program of mandatory training for staff. It was genuine co-production, genuine co-production. So the lanyards and the training were rolled out in the One Foundation Trust initially, and the survey the following year 
showed tangible improvements. And really excitingly, the idea caught on and has now been rolled out nationally. That just shows the impact that championing voice can have. So in closing, I just wanted to leave some thoughts with you. There are so many issues that fight for our time and attention, that focus is really important. Look for things that really make a difference, really make a difference and stick at it. And when we come together and many voices speak as one, we can achieve great things. And I come back to the Dunkirk example. Advocacy might be one small step at a time, but it all adds up. And like the rainbow lanyards example, it can really snowball. So thank you, Action Hampshire, for all the work you do. And it's great to be working together. Thank you.